Welcome to Talking Europe. I'm Catherine Nicholson. Now, I'm sure you will all have seen the footage from parts of West Germany, which, along with uh, other parts of Central and Western Europe, have suffered devastating flash flooding and landslides just over a week ago. Now, clear up and rescue efforts have continued on and the death toll has risen. Chancellor Merkel visiting some of the ruined towns and villages for herself and calling for the fight against climate change to be sped up. Well, today we will be talking about this disaster and its consequences, as well as some other European issues, uh, with the most senior member of Angela Merkel's CDU-CSU alliance in the European Parliament. Manfred Weber is head of the European People's Party group at the Parliament. That's the centre-right group of MEPs, uh, the biggest in the European Parliament. Thanks very much for being with us, Mr Weber. Thank you so much for the invitation. And let's start, as I said, uh, with those floods, that really staggering loss of life uh, in Western Germany after several months worth of rainfall fell in just a few hours last week. The focus right now, of course, very much on uh, safety, clear up, even potentially rescue. But a spokesperson for the German Weather Service uh, did tell a German broadcaster that warnings had not been passed on. Uh, should there be an investigation into whether this could have been predicted and to any degree prevented? Well, first, uh, you are right. Uh, the, the, our thoughts are, first of all, with the victims. Uh, so many people died. Uh, unbelievable, shocking images, heartbreaking images. That is what we saw from the region there. And that's why, again, our thoughts are with the victims and with the families. Uh, and uh, yes, in a few in a few days, in a few weeks, when we have managed now the short uh, outcome of the crisis about the emergency situation, then we have to come back and to have to consider what can we learn out of the crisis. I think for the moment, everybody is doing his best to help and to assist. We saw, see also a lot of European solidarity, also in Belgium, where we have floods. Uh, Austrian fire, fire fighters and mm. all the uh, people who help are present there. So we really see European solidarity, and that is good. And there are large amounts of money already being poured into uh, the reconstruction and, and cleanup efforts, and the finance minister of Germany putting more than 300 million euros of funding on the table. However, uh, from what I've seen and heard, it is widely believed that the full cost will run into billions of euros. This, of course, comes at a time when Germany's economy, like everyone else's, has been hit by the pandemic. How is all of this going to be paid for? Well, the infrastructure damage is huge. Absolutely, and that's why this will produce a lot of costs for the for the German taxpayers, for the German state, and we have to do it together. You know that we also have a mechanism, a fund on European level, where we assist each other, especially in my home region. I am from the Danube River in the south of Germany. We had floods uh, 10, 15 years ago, and there European solidarity was also present, like in other regions of, the, of Europe. So for me, it's important to underline that in such fundamental times of crisis, we have to stay together, like we do it in the COVID situation now. So that is my main message, that solidarity is needed and people must feel you are protected by your state. Your state is assisting you, but also Europe is helping you. And just uh, one other incident related to the floods. Um, now, as uh, uh, the German president visited the, the flood disaster zone, uh, the man who's standing to replace Angela Merkel as chancellor in September's election, Armin Laschet, uh, for our viewers, he's in charge of the region of North Rhine-Westphalia currently. Uh, he was seen in the background of some footage laughing and joking. Um, do you agree with people who predict that this could cost your CDU-CSU alliance votes in September's election? Well, I mean, Laschet apologized for, apologized for this, uh, for this mistake. He, he said it was wrong to do so. Uh, and he's seen in Northern Westphalia as a prime minister, as the person who is now active and the, the person who is really managing the crisis uh, uh, developments uh, in a very positive way. So for the moment, we have no impact on the polls. But I would not, I would really warn us, because we also can talk about other behavior of politicians, about whether they are present or not. I don't want to use this disaster now, this catastrophe for political reasons. It's about helping now, assisting now, and people must see now that all politicians from all, from all parties are really combining their forces and, and helping each other. 
Let's uh, talk more broadly about the climate. Chancellor Merkel made a very clear link between these floods and climate change on that visit. She said, and I quote, we have to speed up the fight against climate change. Uh, now, on last week's uh, Talking Europe programme, we had the leader of the Greens group at the European Parliament, Philippe Lombet, who I'm sure you know well. He told us that he believes the EU's carbon reduction targets actually don't go far enough. Uh, he wants to see a reduction of 60% compared to 1990 levels uh, by the year 2035, not the 55% that the European Commission is committing to. Given these recent events, could you agree with him? Well, obviously, climate change is the top challenge for our generation. That's no doubt about this. And I'm happy that in Europe we have a broad consensus on this. It's not, it's not automatically given that this is the case. Having Poland in mind, having Hungary, having other countries in mind, we have a lot of challenges in front of some about coal, coal industry and all these things. So everybody accepts that we have to speed up. But at the moment, we have the target of 40%. Now we go to 55% and we are the leading continent on global level mm. with this with this target. So I would say, let's do it now. Let's not talk anymore about, about figures because they are abstract. Let's do it now. And that's why I'm proud that uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the commission president, uh, she's from my party, from the European People's Party, that she presented last week an ambitious project, a program mm. for reducing climate change uh, to the 55% goal. Mm. So let's now start. Uh, let's not waste any more time. Mm. That is what I want to do. In terms of concrete action, um, just looking at the figures per capita, Germany actually emits almost double the CO2 of France per capita. Um, so what concretely is Germany going to do to catch up? Well, Germany is, uh, is uh, uh, presenting the goal of uh, climate neutral already 2045, so five years earlier than Europe as a whole. And you're right, we have now the challenge in front of us to distribute in a way the 55% target on European level to all member states, that we have national shares, national contributions now in front of us to discuss these issues. And therefore, sure, those who are emitting more, who are who are having more emissions on, on CO2, must do more. And that's why the next German government has to also present an ambitious uh, proposal for the future to be really still the leading, the leading uh, uh, country. You know, the background of this difference between, for example, France and Germany is mainly the nuclear industry. And there, Germany did a national decision to uh, to not continue to use nuclear energy for for producing electricity mm. that's the main difference on this mm. but that is a national responsibility that's not european business of course we're looking at some other recent news of the past days at the beginning of this week uh, an investigation was released showing that various governments around the world have used a spyware uh, called Pegasus. I'm sure our viewers have seen this on France 24. It means that people's phones can basically be transformed into surveillance devices, seeing their photos, their location, even activating the microphone. Uh, the evidence indicates uh, that investigative journalists in Hungary were spied upon, although the government says it's not aware of alleged data collection. Uh, your MEP colleague, Giva Hofstadt, uh, wants a full investigation by the European Parliament. Do you agree? <laughs> We need an investigation, no doubt about this, because we are not speaking about party political points between left, right, uh, conservative, greens and social democrats. That's not the issue on the table. The issue on the table is about respecting our fundamental rights, about privacy, about the freedom of media, about freedom of those who are politically active in Europe. So that is the subject on the table. And again, that's fundamental for what I call the European way of life. And having this challenge in mind, we need a, a proper investigation, mm -hmm. a proper assessment about what is going on. I, I think all those who are doing the, uh, the, the investigation already from a, a journalistic point of view, and that is now a good base to start now the investigation. We need clarity on this, and I hope that the Hungarian authorities are ready to contribute to this. Mm -hmm. and let me be very clear, we have now the Hungarian point on this point on the table, but although we have Poland with they are not respecting anymore the uh, the court cases, the outcome of court cases from Luxembourg, so the European Court of Justice uh, results. Having these things in mind, uh, I think we must now activate our rule of law mechanism to mm -hmm. even stop payments from European taxpayers' money to the two countries concerned if they are not respecting anymore our fundamental principles. Uh, it sounds like you don't believe the Hungarian government when they say they were not aware of alleged data collection. Is that the case? Well, I see the statement, but I think uh, uh, the Hungarian government must be ready to allow an independent investigation on these points. It's not anymore a an Hungarian internal issue. It has a broader, uh, a broader impact on European level, and that's why we need we need the clarity on these points. 
again, people all over Europe must be sure that we respect the principles as to be Europeans. Mm -hmm. Again, I call it the European way of life. And if the Europeans cannot cannot be sure anymore that these principles are respected European-wide in all EU countries, then we have a broader problem on the table. It's not anymore a Hungarian internal issue. And there have been some proceedings launched recently by the European Commission against Hungary's government and against Poland's government over rule of law issues. Uh, following this, there has even been talk of potentially Poland uh, leaving the European Union. Is that a possibility in your eyes? That is not what I uh, discuss and what I want to ask for. Uh, that's obviously clear that I, as an European polit politician, I want to keep Europe together. And and I see a lot of people in, in Poland, for example, going out in the streets, are fighting and, and making demonstrations in fight of a pro-European approach and also a rule of law based approach for Poland. So a very tough discussion going on in Poland. We had last year elections for the president of Poland and there was only a small difference between those who, who, who voted for a pro-European uh, president who was really ready to defend rule of law mm. and a small, thin majority in favor of a PiS candidate. Mm. So that's why there is a lot of positive momentum in Poland. And I count a lot on the Polish people that say stand up and fight for a pro-European development. And Europe must assist. Europe must help. Europe must be clear on the rules, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the principles, and to show our solidarity with those who are today on the streets. All right, Manfred Weber, that is all we have time for at the moment. I'm sure we'll be speaking to you again after the summer when the European Parliament gets going again. Thank you very much for now. I thank you so much. Thanks to you for watching as well. Hope to see you in part two of the programme. We're going to be de debating the issue of paternity leave around the European Union. Do stay with us.